Welcome back to another tactical fly fisher on the water tutorial. I'm coming to you from a trout stream that I've never fished before today. I've driven by it lots of times, but never stopped. So I figured it was about time. Uh, in today's tutorial, I'm the only one here. Connor's not here to film, so uh, this is going to be auto filmed and I hope it, the footage comes out all right. Uh, but we're going to look at this winter pool that's behind me and uh, I'm going to break it into a couple parts because there's a lower part that looks like it might hold fish and then the, the better upper part. I'll fish those two parts, I'll talk you through it, and let you know what I'm doing. Hopefully it'll be helpful the next time you're on a winter pool. Uh, let's go fish. Alright, so I've now moved up just a little bit in the pool. There's a little deeper depression here, formed from the run that's coming in as it's scoured out. And that nice deep part of the depression, I really need to try and get a vertical tuck there to drive those flies down. Uh, I don't have a ton of weight on for that water with the 2.8 millimeter and a 2.3 millimeter fly. That water has to be at least... There's a fish. Looks like I got a grand old whitey. And it took the blowtorch on the dropper. Ooh, this one's got really rosy cheeks for whitefish. Well, it'll be interesting to see if they keep coming up for the dropper to eat that blowtorch. If they do, then it might be time to change out the point. They all pretty tight on the bottom in 34 degree water. If they're coming up for the dropper, they definitely want it more. All right. See you later, whitefish. So there's an interesting color pattern here. The high load of sand that's in this river makes a lot of the shallow water gray. And then those deeper scoured out parts that are out there are uh, darker. And so I'm trying to make drifts along the edge. Ooh, nice rainbow. Again, it took the blowtorch. Yeah, nice rainbow. A tractor based enough to grab enough attention right now in this slow winter water. So I'll let this rainbow go. See you later, fish. And uh, then I'm going to switch my point fly probably to another tag nymph since they're like in the dark blowtorch on the dropper. We'll try to uh, have. Uh, two tag nymphs on there, and I just switched to a hair's ear blowtorch on the point, and on my first pool now, um, that last one took immediately after I switched to a hair's ear blowtorch on the point, and it took that point fly after I drifted through that area before with a paragon on the, the point. And the uh, the Hairs Ear Blowtorch has a three millimeter inverting bead dropper fly. That Peacock Blowtorch has a 2.3 millimeter slotted bead. So honestly for this depth of water and, and speed, it's not super slow in there. Um, I'm probably better off with the micro leader than the rig I've got on. Right now I have that slightly thicker Euro leader on that's basically 12 thousandths of an inch thick for the whole leader so that I can grease the cider and, and float it. Um, I like that a lot for situations where I have flat water, smooth water that I can grease and float it and get a really nice drift upstream of me, but this is deep enough I can, I mostly need to do sideways drifts here, which are probably better off that micro leader. So, I'm going to give this a few more goes here and we might end up switching to my other rod that has a micro leader on it. So the interesting thing here, that paradigm that I had on the, the point before, it had a 2.8 slotted bead on it 
This Hair's Ear blowtorch has a three millimeter inverting bead on it, but because of that extra drag that the materials of the fly have versus the Perdigon, I just barely touched bottom for the first time. I hadn't been ticking in any of my prior drifts with this rig, so it just goes to show you the, the different sink rates of patterns based on the style of their body, even uh, despite weight disparity. That, that Perdigon was lighter, probably by about 15%, but there we go, there's a fish, but the three millimeter inverting bead of that uh, blowtorch actually sank slower because of the CDC hackle and the dubbing and stuff on it. Looks like another nice trout here. So it's pretty clear in this pool so far, the little depression that was downstream, apparently it wasn't slow and deep enough in these conditions to get the fish to hold in it because I've moved upstream just about, oh, I don't know, probably 30 feet and into water that is uh, not a whole lot different, but just a little bit slower and a little bit deeper, mainly just deeper. And now I'm on my fourth fish, a really nice brown trout. And this took the dropper blowtorch again, the peacock version. So even though it's on the dropper, they really still seem to be liking that and coming up through the column for it. Oh, big old kipe on that fish. Post-spawn male. Still got a gray looking belly. Look at how big the head on that thing is. That's an old brown trout right there. Yeah, not super heavy because of the post-spawn, but man, what a big head. Beautiful fish. See you later, buddy. So, as I'm working across the, the pool here, I'm still getting fish on this rig. So I'm not gonna change quite yet. We'll wait a few more casts. And what I'm doing here is I'm just stopping that rod really high. Um, basically, I'm, I'm doing a downer and upper tuck cast variation. So I'm making my cast actually driving the nymphs down on the forward cast, but then uh, re-elevating the rod and jutting it forward. So I come down and then I re-elevate and jut forward. And that drives those nymphs vertically down, but then allows the cider to carry on past them. I talked about that cast in our original modern nymphing film. And that's allowing uh, those flies on this thicker leader with the cider floated a little bit at distance to still, there's another fish, still get down. This one took the point fly back to the hair's ear blow torch. It's not quite as big as the others I don't think, but still some pretty good head shakes. Another brown trout. A lot younger fish than the last brown trout. I think when I caught that last fish, I was in the middle of explaining with, uh, what I'm doing. And so essentially what I'm doing is making that tuck cast to varying degrees of aggression or um, verticality. And based on that, I can adjust my sink rate. But then as the After the tuck cast, I'm just letting that thicker cider float. I've greased it up with some payette paste. And then when it gets within range, and if it gets sideways there, I'm picking it up off the water very carefully and very slowly. Uh, one of the number one mistakes I see when people are euro nymphing is if they let their cider uh, hit the water, whether on accident or on purpose, when they go to pick it up, they're not very careful about it. So I normally do it by just take bottom there. I normally pick my cider up um, mainly by retrieving slack with my left hand so that it's not abrupt because I find that the rod tip pickup ends up grabbing a little too much a lot of times and pulling the cider off 
uh, abruptly and then you've messed up your drift. So I kind of use my slack retrieval to, to pull the cider off the water. All right, so I just fished the bottom end of this pool, which of course had the best looking winter water. It was uh, slower and deeper than where I'm at right now, but it, uh, one of the joys of filming by yourself is <laughs> I went back and checked my camera on the bank and all of the uh, footage on that was out of frame. So all I got was GoPro stuff. So we'll see if it makes it in, in this clip, but if not, uh, we're gonna give this middle part of the pool a try now. It's almost transitioning into a run here, uh, quite a bit faster water than what I just caught those fish out of. Um, still has some depth here in the center. So that's where I expect to find fish. There's a couple of boulders on the upstream side of the, where I'm fishing here that have scoured out a little bit of water and uh, really dug some depth below them. So I'm hoping that the bottom of the river is slow enough compared to the surface that fish are still in it. Um, the water is very cold. It's only 34 degrees, so they're not going to be in really fast water, I would assume. And I fished the bottom end of the pool with a floated cider rig, just a thicker liter, thicker euro liter, about 12 thousandths of an inch thick grease and uh, using tuck casts, there's a fish, to uh, to get it down to where I needed while floating the cider and then picking it up smoothly. I've now switched to a micro leader. Uh, this upper part of the pool is, uh, like I say, it's transitioning to a run here. It's quite a bit faster. And so I, the, the floated cider technique just isn't as appropriate here compared to the micro leader. So I've got the micro leader. I just put some Scafars wax. Whoop. Um, on and it's probably about four, four and a half feet from my top dropper. And then I've got another 20 inches beyond that. It's fairly deep water right here. Uh, it's at least, you know, belly button deep when it gets out there. So I need a fair amount of tippet to get my flies to where they need to go. That fish took the dropper fly. I, I had so many fish on the dropper on a peacock blowtorch uh, at the bottom of the pool that I put another one on for this micro leader here and that's what this fish took. Oh, There we go. The funny thing is the fly popped out but I had the fish hog tied <laughs> in the teeth <laughs> and the the loop of tippet that was still in its teeth guided it into the net. That fish would not have counted in a competition, but uh, it's in the net either way. And that's a beautiful chromy with pink rainbow. Nice fish. Okay. So I just landed another rainbow here in the faster portion of kind of the upper part of the pool as it's transitioning to a run, and uh, I took my peacock blowtorch. Um, uh, then of course it gave me a tangle while I was landing it, so I had to pick that out. But there's one depression right here in the center where it's the deepest and the slowest. That's where I expect most of the fish to be. Um, so I'm gonna work my way down in that. I haven't ticked bottom or really downshifted in it very well yet. So I don't know if I've gotten deep enough in there. It looks like I need to put on a little more weight for that water. All right, so I've drifted through there with the rig that I've got enough times to know that I'm not really down in it much. So I'm gonna go one step <clears throat> heavier, but I'm also going to go to a mop that's going to slow my sink rate, so it's not going to get the full um, increase in sink rate. But we'll play a little cleanup game with the mop. Okay, so I've switched to a mop on the point. It's got a three and a half millimeter 
inverting bead on it, so it's definitely heavier. But given that it's a mop, it's gonna sink slower, but I still tip bottom there. There's a fish. On the far side over there where it's just a little bit slower. Ooh. It's uh, going pretty hard for 34 degree water. <laughs> Come back here. <laughs> Especially if there's fish up there, I don't want any spoke in them. All right, nice rainbow. Looks like it did take that mop. Sweet. Alrighty, well, a couple of fish out of this middle portion here so far. Definitely not giving them up as easily as the lower portion of the pool that was slower and deeper. So I'm guessing there probably aren't as many fish here. And it's not as good of winter holding water, so that's to be expected. Um, this is a portion of the runner pool that I would expect to be best when the water temperature is kind of in the 40s at least and it's low 30s right now so there's probably not a lot of fish in it um, that bottom portion of the pool is noticeably slower and about the same depth so it definitely had more fish in it okay there's one last part here that might have some fish. This is uh, a lot faster than the lower portion of the pool, but there's a little bit of a slow seam on the far side, and it really does drop off still here, and there's a boulder in the middle of it, which scours the depression that I was just fishing below it, but upstream of it, there's a little bit of a cushion there as well. So I'm gonna fish that cushion and then hit the far bank that has some slower water on it. Hoping to eke out, there we go. A little smaller rainbow, it looks like. Nope, brown trout. Took that peacock blowtorch on the dropper again. But um, this is not the prime winter holding water in the, in the pool, which is maybe why this is a little smaller fish than what I've been getting, because it's not the dominant fish and is getting pushed where it doesn't want to be. Um, but still slow enough and deep enough that it's worth fishing, obviously. So we'll try fishing around in there a little more and see if I can get anything else. And I still have that micro leader on. This faster water up here is definitely better with the standard up and across approach instead of floating the cider mostly upstream. So that's why that micro leader is my choice. Oop, there's another fish. Yeah, see the, the fish I'm getting at the top top end here are definitely smaller. But that's all right. That's a fun jumping rainbow for how cold the water is. This one took the hair's ear blowtorch on the point. Uh, so there you go. I mean, winter holding water doesn't just have to be the deepest, slowest portion of a pool. The last two fish show that. Even if they're not as big, they're a lot of fun. All right, see you later, little guy. So I'm just looking at the, the slowest, deepest part of this part of the run. And there again, I can see color changes in there which are showing me where that is. That dark gray, uh, the darkest gray down the slot in the center, that's where the slowest water is. The light gray that's to the side, that's just the, the silty sand that is dominant in this river. And 
its presence there suggests that it's not quite as deep. Everywhere that I've seen that has that has lower velocity as well. Um, but that gray sand doesn't provide the, uh, the slowing of the, the current that the rocky substrate does, so the fish don't often sit on it. The last two are right on the edge of that light gray in the dark water, and I am ticking bottom occasionally there, probably even more than I want to, so I definitely don't need more weight. Oops. Ticked right before that boulder. I want to see if I can get a couple drifts that go right to the boulder. So I'm avoiding a tuck cast on that one to not drive my flies down as much. Yep, that's all I needed. So I had been getting too deep. And that fish was right in front of the boulder, but I'd been ticking just about where the fish was each time. And uh, so on the last drift, I put my cast not quite as far upstream. And I also didn't tuck cast it, so I just kind of laid it a little bit more horizontally on the water, and that way the, the sink rate was slower, and it got my flies down to that rock without ticking bottom. And this fish took right away. Nice brown trout. on that here's your blowtorch there we go nice oh that may be post spawn but he is still super buttery and beautiful over there there's one last spot right up here that i want to hit but my gopro battery is about to run out so i'm going to turn this off reposition and maybe get uh, a fish or two out of it before it runs out all the way. Okay, I'm at the top of the run here. It's mostly fast, so there's not a lot of good winter holding water, but there's a boulder right here, and mainly a boulder right there. It's creating a, a deep and slow enough pocket that there might still be some fish here, even despite the cold temperatures. So I'm gonna hurry and fish it, hopefully before this GoPro battery runs out. Yeah, it's nice and slow, it's just stalling in there. So it could definitely still, there's a fish. Uh, <laughs> I was about to say it could definitely still hold a fish. Well, it did. Another nice average rainbow here. Took that dropper peacock blowtorch again. They really have liked that. Enough to come up through the column a little bit for it. When it comes to winter holding water, you know, slow and deep is important, but slow and deep can be relative. It doesn't just have to be the absolute slowest, deepest pool that you can find all the time. Anywhere where the fish can get out of the current and still feel some safety over their head will still hold fish in the winter. Thanks for watching this tactical fly fisher video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so that you get a notification when we post new videos. And feel free to share it with your friends. We'd love to have as many of you see it as possible. And come on over to tacticalflyfisher.com where we can help you out with whatever fly tying and fly fishing gear you need. Thanks for watching.